Okay, this says, according to Master Foods, the company that manufactures M&Ms, 12% of peanut M&Ms are brown. Let's write that down. Brown, 15% has a decimal that's 0.15. Oops, I put the wrong percentage. It should be 12%. Okay, so I'm going right here. 0.12. Okay. Then it goes on to say 15% are yellow. And I'll say 0.15 for that. Okay, and these are probabilities. I'm basically just... I'll just say probability, turning the percentages into probabilities. All right, then 12% um, are red. So the probability of drawing a red M&M would be 0.2. What, what, what did I say? 0.12. And then blue, 0.23, since 23% are blue. And then 23% are orange, okay. And 15% are green. Now, compute the probability that a randomly selected peanut M&M is not blue. All right, well, Let's pay attention to the fact that it says A randomly selected. Okay, so we're only going to be selecting one M&M at a time. All right, so first of all, being not blue, well, all of the ones that are not blue can be added together because if we say not blue, it could be brown or yellow or red or orange or green. So remember that when we use the word or, that means we should add the probabilities. So the probability of not blue is the sum of the probabilities for every other color added together. 0.77. Now uh, it says, please enter a decimal accurate to three decimal places. Okay, well, we could put a zero on the end of this, um, although it should take it either way. Okay, now it says, compute the probability that a randomly selected peanut M&M is blue or brown. Okay, so we're going to do blue or brown now. And again, since we're using the word or, we can just add up the probability of blue with the probability of brown. So we're just adding them, okay? I'm using the sum function to make that a little faster since I have Excel here, um, but I could have just as easily have done um, 0.23 plus, uh, what's brown? 0.12. So that gives me 0.35 as an answer. Then compute the probability that three randomly selected peanut M&Ms are all green. Okay, now this is different than above here, where it says just a randomly selected M&M. Okay, now we are doing three randomly selected M&Ms. Okay, so we're going to select one and put that to the side and then select another put that to the side, and then select another. So this is selection without replacement, multiple trials. So we would want to use the multiplication rule. So it'll be the probability of green and green and green. In other words, green and then green and then green. Or you could just say using G to denote green, P of G, G, G. So, um, This is interesting because normally, if we're selecting without replacement, 
we would have to adjust the probability of having a green M&M &M so that it's different each time, accounting for the loss of each M&M. &M. But since this is presented in a way that we don't know um, how many we have, in other words, it's not a sample, this is just you know, the population of peanut M&Ms, we have no way of adjusting the probabilities. So even though we would normally consider this without replacement, the only thing we're able to do here is just assume that since this is you know, going on the whole population of M&Ms, taking out one green M&M wouldn't make a huge difference to the probability. So all we'll do is we'll just do that probability times itself three times. Okay. Um, or I could type in 0.15 times 0.15 times 0.15. Or some of you are thinking, why not just do 0.15 to the power of three, which is much more efficient. And you could even click on the cell and then do the caret key, which acts as an exponent, and then the three to the power of three. All right, now it says accurate to three decimal places, and this is another reason why it might not matter if we're doing it without replacement, because if we're only gonna round off to three decimal places, then um, it probably wouldn't make a difference in the final answer anyway. Um, this one says, if you randomly select three peanut M&Ms, again, we're selecting three, so we're gonna use the multiplication rule. Compute that the probability uh, compute the probability that none of them are yellow. Okay, well first, we're going to have to compute the probability of one M&M not being yellow. Okay, so first we'll get that. So that is the sum of all the probabilities except for the probability of yellow. I'm going to add up all those. And now the probability of not yellow, and then not yellow again, and then not yellow again, would mean that I would take that probability of one randomly selected peanut M&M not being yellow and multiply that times itself three times or to the power of three. Ooh, maybe it's because I didn't round it. Yeah, I just wanted me to round it. So it's important to follow the round off recommendations because um, those are placed there based on how the algorithm that grades these things is um, programmed. So it's important to follow that. Okay, so if you randomly select three peanut M&Ms, compute the probability that at least one of them is yellow. Okay. So um, again, we're selecting three, so we're going to be using the multiplication rule. Um, but this one, there's a little trick. It says compute the probability that at least one of them is yellow. Well, we just computed the probability of its complement that all of them are yellow. Okay. Or, I'm sorry, none of them are yellow. Oh my gosh. Right? We just computed the probability that none of them are yellow. Now we're asked to compute the probability that at least one of them is yellow. So that's the complement. The complement of none is at least one and vice versa. So I'm going to say that the probability of at least one of three being yellow, that is equal to one minus the probability that none are yellow. Okay. Therefore, all I have to do to get my answer here is do one minus the probability of all of them not being yellow. And we'll want to make sure to follow the round off rule uh, to 0 0.386.